Hi, this is JP Morgan, and today on The Slanted Lens, we're shooting out on location here in Los Angeles. We're shooting a swordsman in the setting sun using TTL flash. Let's see how we can get that TTL flash off the camera and bounce it with the setting sun. When I light, I have to control where the light is placed and on the camera is rarely a choice for me. So today, we're going to look at how you get your TTL flash off the camera and balance it with that setting sun. I'm going to use my Pocket Wizards and a Canon TTL 600EX and also the Strobe's Pro Flash TTLi-C. This gives me two light sources that combining with my Pocket Wizards gives me the flexibility of getting these away from the camera. Let's see how we can set this up. I set my Canon 600 flash on a Pocket Wizard Flex TT5 and mounted it with a Photoflex bracket shooting through a small octodome. I set the zone to A for my key light. The Strobe Pro Flash TLI-C I will set on another Flex TTI-5 in zone B for my rim light. My assistant's going to Hollywood it. In Hollywood, that means you just hold the light and not put it on a stand. I don't know why I had to throw that in, but I did. On the camera, I'll put the Pocket Wizard Mini TTI and the AC3 zone controller. The zone control will allow me to change the power on each strobe head from the camera. I will put the TTL flashes in manual and control the power output from the camera. This is not meant to be a Pocket Wizard ad, it's just the way that I solved this problem. It worked great, but was a bit expensive. Canon has a remote trigger for TTL flashes, but you can only use it with Canon, not with other TTL flashes. So that's going to be a lesson for another day. When I use the AC3 and put my TTL flash in manual, I can now control the flash output from 164th power to full power. My camera settings are 800 ISO, F10 for deep focus and 1 80th of a second to balance the setting sun. At this point I don't have any light on my talent, it's just the ambient light which is basically our sky. So we're going to turn our strobes on, we're going to put them up at full power. So here's our first image, it's too bright in his face so I'm going to dial this down, the key light down by one stop by rolling the dial from 3 counterclockwise to 2. This is a little too dark, so I'm going to dial it back up one third by moving the dial clockwise to two thirds and take a new image. This looks great, so let's go ahead and get started shooting. Our backlight is balanced to our rim and key and the three of them are working great together right now. As the sun sets, we're going to need to balance our exposure with the setting sun. The aperture will stay the same, but the shutter is going to need to be lengthened. The aperture is going to stay the same because our strobes are balanced to the aperture. If we lengthen the shutter, it will not affect the strobe exposure on his face at all, but it's going to brighten the sky that is not lit by our strobes. Here's an image using our original settings. The sun's gone down, so our sky has gotten very dark. This is just too dark. We need to lengthen the shutter to 1 15th of a second. Now we're getting the exposure we need in the sky in the background. But remember, the aperture stays the same, so the light on the person's face stays the same. I'll lengthen this exposure beyond a second to keep that sky balanced with our strobe light on the face of our talent up front. It gives me a lot more time to shoot in that setting sun and gives you some pretty dramatic looks actually. Let's take a look at some of the final unretouched images. This was fun to work with TTL flashes in the setting sun. I like TTL flashes so much better when I can get them away from the camera, I can get modifiers on them that give me the ability to shape them and to use them the way I like to use strobes. This worked out a lot better for me, so I like this setup. Again, a bit expensive with all the pocket wizards, but worked flawlessly. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on TTL Flash and the setting sun. Keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.